In this problem, we're solving a separable first order differential equation. And this means we're able to separate all the y dependence and x dependence on opposite sides of the equation. And then we just integrate. And we'll be able to determine a general solution of this thing. But it turns out to be kind of complicated in this case. And it's best to just leave it as an implicit relationship. So we're not going to solve for y in the end because we would end up losing part of our solution. So to use separation of variables, we express y prime as dy dx. And we get dy dx is equal to y cubed cosine squared x. And we move all the y dependence to the left-hand side. And this gives me a dy over y cubed is equal to cosine squared x dx. Then we just slap an integral sign on the left and right-hand sides of this equation. And I'm going to re-express 1 over y cubed as y to the negative 3, because it makes it easier to see the power rule. So I have y to the negative 3 dy is equal to integral of cosine squared x dx. Now, each of these integrals produces an arbitrary constant, and those two arbitrary constants can be combined into one, and I'm going to leave that on the right-hand side. And the left-hand side for now, I have y to the negative 3, so I use the power rule on that. I add 1 to the exponent, and I get y to the negative 2 divided by negative 2. Well, this could be written as a negative 1 over 2y squared. On the right-hand side, we're going to have to use an identity to integrate this. So cosine squared turns out to be 1 half times the quantity 1 plus the cosine of twice the angle. And we use this all the time when we find ourselves integrating even powers of sine and cosine. We have a couple identities for that. I'll go ahead and clean things up a little bit as I'm computing the integral on the right-hand side. So what I mean is just that I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And I end up with a negative 1 over y squared is equal to the integral of 1. Well, that's just x. And then the integral of cosine 2x, well, that's basically sine 2x. But I need to put a 1 half out in front to account for what the chain rule does. So when I differentiate 1 half sine 2x, the chain rule produces a factor of 2 that kills the 1 half, and I get cosine 2x. And now I'll go ahead and throw in my arbitrary constant plus c. And it's probably rude to leave a minus sign on this y term, so I'll go ahead and multiply both sides by negative 1. You may even want to solve for y squared, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it in this form. And negative c is really just some other arbitrary constant, and I'll just call it plus c. So we're not explicitly solving for y here. Just to avoid the complication of having to do a plus or minus the square root of whatever's on the other side of the equation, I'm just leaving it in implicit form. And in part b, well, we can still apply an initial condition in implicit form. So my initial condition is y of pi is equal to 1. In other words, when x equals pi, y equals 1. So on the left-hand side, I replace y with 1, and I just get a 1 over there. And I get that that's equal to negative pi minus 1 half times the sine of 2 pi. Well, that vanishes, plus c. So I solve for c, and I get that c is just equal to pi plus 1. So we can think of this general solution as a family of curves. I can plug in infinitely many different c's, each one of those producing an implicit curve. But by letting c equal pi plus 1, we're selecting the unique implicit curve that passes through the point pi 1. The only thing left to do is to write down the particular solution. And that's found by just replacing c with the constant we just found. So I get this implicit curve. 1 over y squared is equal to negative x minus 1 half sine 2x plus pi plus 1. And now I have the unique implicit curve satisfying the differential equation and passing through the indicated point. And we're done. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it useful, check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left, or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.